Man, it's been a long time since I've tasted the soothing lull of a visual novel. Far too long if you ask me. So when I saw this title, I was a bit apprehensive on whether or not to review it. What can I say? I'm a game reviewer. Emphasis on the game. That's the kind of stuff I prefer to talk about. I know the community around this game is pretty awesome and the characters are pure waifu bait, but game, you've got to throw me a bone here. Eh, close enough, but don't expect a long review this time. Either way, it's time to mix drinks and change lives because today we are reviewing Valhalla, a cyberpunk bartender action by Sukaban Games. Let's get started. Before we go into the story, let's just take a moment to enjoy that visual presentation. Let the PC-98 feel just wash over you because it is gorgeous. The game even goes out of its way to give the player an option for scan lines to complete the retro feel. The year is 27X, much like many old school games that refuse to be in a specific time. And our story is set in the corrupted land of Glitch City, where the corporations run unopposed, law enforcement can't be trusted, and nanomachines are just as likely to kill you as the thugs that roam the streets. Did I mention the game's cast is primary waifu bait? You have the Christmas cake hacker waifu, the nice girl cop waifu, the lowly prostitute waifu, and even a straight up cat girl waifu. It's a trap! Actually, if you're expecting to romance any of the characters, this isn't that kind of game. It's actually quite linear as you follow the story of Jill and her job as a bartender at VA11 Hall A, aka Valhalla. There's probably a better way to describe Jill's story, but that would quickly veer into spoiler territory, and since a visual novel is 90% story, I'm going to try my best to keep the spoilers on the down low for this review. No promises. Upon starting the first day of the game, you are introduced to your main crew, Gil, your main co-worker and quote unquote fuckboy, just look at that face, and Dana, the boss of Valhalla and an unquestionable badass. But where the writing really shines is in the customers. These characters are both the most important and the most interesting parts of the game, telling their stories as you serve them drinks. They are how you get to experience the world of Glitch City and their perspectives are just as varied as their character designs. Jill can be talking to the owner of a news business one minute and then chewing away an underage customer the next. Or you could give her a drink, I'm just saying she's, you know, already here. That's no good. While the character designs are not as ridiculous as to have complete art shifts for certain characters, Glitch City is rife with genetic modifications, artificial intelligence, and talking motherfucking dogs all ready to tell their stories. They don't do this in a bubble either. Many characters will overlap with each other in the bar and interact with each other, adding that much more to the immersion. I can't think of any other game where a lolly prostitute robot, or lolista bot for short, can get lightly interrogated by a sci-fi Valkyrie about having illegally modified bullet shooting fingers. I can't talk enough about how well done the characters in Valhalla are. Obviously I enjoyed spending time with my favorite characters like Stella, Say, Alma, Betty, and the true bae Dorothy, but the game does a good enough job with both its writing and character development that by the end I even wanted to spend time with some of the characters I hated the most. Sadly though, I do feel that some characters were underutilized and their story is not reaching any sort of conclusion, but to be fair, that's actually quite realistic. Outside of the bartending, there are still plenty of ways to learn about Glitch City, mainly in the intermission sections where Jill is in her apartment. She can spend time on the internet, reading the game's equivalent of 4chan, or checking out the Augmented Eye, a news website filled to the brim with puff pieces and also holding the occasional important message for the city. Both of these will get new articles over time and can even be altered depending on character interaction with Jill. Even the items themselves in the game all have tiny bits of lore attached to them with text that can either amuse or horrify the reader. But sadly, I think I've burned through most of my talking points in this section, 
don't be surprised if the rest of the review goes by pretty quickly after this. But now, let's talk about gameplay. You make drinks. Okay, okay, I'm not gonna do that to this game. But seriously, don't expect an essay in this section as the gameplay in Valhalla is quite limited and only serves as a way to keep the player engaged in this visual novel. The gameplay of Valhalla is centered around taking orders from your customers and making drinks to their liking. There are five ingredients to craft drinks from, four normal ingredients, and one alcoholic ingredient by the name of Karmatrine. These are combined in various ways to create all the uniquely named drinks in the game. Each customer that shows up will ask for a drink, some of them being specific while others will be looking for just a particular type of drink, leaving these specifics up to you. This is intentionally simple, creating a chill environment for the player to relax. It is actually more difficult to not succeed with an always available cookbook as well as most of the time Jill herself reminding the player what to make or at least leaving a hint when it's not obvious. The only time Jill does not do this is during certain moments where the game decides to test the player on their memory of past conversations or when you ignore buying items when Jill is at home that keep Jill focused on her job. Jill, come on now girl, rent's due in like two days and I decided to buy an arcade machine with our savings. There is a fair bit of leeway with the drink making since you don't necessarily need to make exactly what the customer wants in order to make them happy. In fact, serving specific customers specific drinks will unlock alternate dialogue so that you can learn more about their story. Or you could get them drunk. <laughs> If you want to have a little fun, you can attempt to get your customers intoxicated by increasing the amount of Karmatrine in their drinks, either by serving their drink big, which means doubling the ingredients, or by adding as much alcohol as you can to a drink with optional Karmatrine, which translates to turn this drink into a homemade disinfectant. Or you could ignore what the customer wants and just serve them whatever you want, but you might piss them off, although they still drink it. Getting your customers drunk can result in ridiculous dialogue from the characters as they vomit out their deepest darkest secrets and insecurities. Or if you're a Lelista bot you just retell some of your quote unquote greatest hits. No 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 Please later you don't understand. You don't know what you're doing here. You can also tweak the music that plays via the jukebox at the beginning of every shift and after your break, much like a real job would. In fact, I would argue that this entire game does feel like a more relaxing slash romanticized version of what a bartending job would look like. One issue with the core gameplay though is that bartending while relaxing is still a one trick pony and while the first playthrough is fine, when engaging in New Game Plus for missed scenes, the bartending can get annoying fast. I do want to say that a second playthrough is worth it though as there are some secrets in the game waiting to be discovered and while you could get them in the first playthrough, odds are you won't since there are no hints on their existence till the end of the game. That pretty much covers the gameplay, not much to say about it. Now let's talk about some certain qualities the game has as a visual novel over in the miscellaneous section. As a visual novel, the game does quite well at presenting itself. The characters are well animated, the writing is immersive, but there were two main things that stuck out to me that sort of dampened the experience. I'm actually quite confused at how some other reviews gave the impression that the player's choices could affect how the game progressed. While the way Jill serves her drinks can change how her customers tell their stories, there are no points in the story that it branches off into what one would call an alternate route for the narrative to take. I don't feel it's an issue for the game as the story you are given is quite good, but it does feel a bit disingenuous to give potential customers the impression that you can drastically change the story when you really can't. The story you see in this game is the story you get, and all you can change is how much lore and detail the world and its inhabitants you are getting. And that goes double for the endings this game has. The game supposedly has six endings, but in reality they are just six extra scenes that are unlocked by making the right choice at key moments. 
When the game ends, after the credits you will see all the end scenes you have unlocked, one after another, similar to the modern Fallout games. The actual ending of the game is always the same. The other thing I feel needs to be brought up is the lack of any form of intelligent skipping options, aka skip previous read dialogue. When a visual novel is going for replayability, I feel it's something like a necessity in order not to annoy the player by forcing them to read line after line of old text. This in turn makes it a lot harder to even know when you have obtained a unique scene, especially if it's a moment that only really kicks in on a later shift. There are tons of alternate conversations to obtain, but without a clear cut way to know when you've unlocked one, or even a checklist to say how many unique dialogues a character has, I feel more inclined to use the internet to learn about these scenes rather than find them myself. Aside from those two glaring annoyances, I really enjoyed chilling with this title. I just wish there was more of it. After being so immersed in Glitch City, I was disappointed to leave it. Thinking back to other visual novels, this one was rather short, clocking it at around 10 to 15 hours compared to other titles that can easily break the 50 hour mark, with the player wondering why the sun is no longer up and why they don't have a job anymore. I will say though, that the shorter length does prevent the game from wearing out as welcome, so the player experience can be smooth all the way through without you wanting to quit your fantasy bartending job. So now, with that I think it's a good time to move on to my final thoughts. See, I told you this review would be rather short. But anyways, Valhalla was quite the literary experience and reminded me just how much I enjoyed reading visual novels in the past. Going into this game, I was worried that it would be a sort of hardcore memorization game, but almost everything in this game was made to be a relaxing experience for the player. I will say though, that if you play video games for the escapism from the real world, then this game might not fit that mold as there is a subtext of social commentary inside of it that depending on what kind of life you live might hit uncomfortably close to home. I went into this game expecting waifu sci-fi romance and got so much more despite the small package. So with a price of $14.99 I'm going to have to give this title a straight buy for the visual novel lovers and a sale for the people who are new to the genre. It's a short title but worth it if you want to read a good story about living in the cyberpunk dystopia that is Glitch City. I don't necessarily have a positive outlook on how it handles the replayability, but that first run is spectacular. It also helps that I am absolutely in love with the fan content that has come out from this game. It really shows just how good the world of Glitch City and its inhabitants are and I really hope that maybe these developers will come back to this world in the future. And with that we have reached the end of the review, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Peace!